Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at the first verse. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few years ago, for, uh, for Christmas Eve, I uh, decided that it would be cute and funny to tell the people to expect the unexpected. And so what I did to highlight expecting the unexpected is I pulled out a gigantic uh, five foot high, three foot wide, uh, red Tyrannosaurus Rex and another five foot high, three foot wide inflatable unicorn. And while the church was full of people on Christmas Eve and expecting the unexpected, the, they did not really fully expect to have their priest arrive with a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex and a giant unicorn. Nor did they expect what came next, which was that I had each side of the uh, congregation the, uh, in their pews race. And to see which side of the uh, congregation on Christmas Eve could get their Tyrannosaurus Rex or their unicorn to the back in the balcony and back up to the front to me first. And so we did a race on Christmas Eve and the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the unicorn went out and they came back and everyone had a big laugh and we all thought that, thought that was cute and funny until later when a mother told me that her child was uh, screaming, crying, afraid of Christmas Eve because of the giant red monster that lived at the church. Ah, the experiences of parish ministry and the failures of rectors who are trying to connect with their congregation any way possible, myself included. I tell you that story because this is the second Sunday of Advent, and this is a time of expectation, and we are to expect the unexpected. Not so traumatic as uh, dinosaurs and unicorns in our church, but maybe something as unexpected as a bunch of angels singing God's praises and, and swooping down upon shepherds. Maybe as unexpected as a young mother who's outside in a, in a manger when a bunch of shepherds show up to see uh, her new baby child. The unexpected is we didn't expect the uh, Savior to come out of Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? The unexpected, we didn't expect that God would use crucifixion and death to show us the way of eternal life and resurrection and to show us an empty tomb. The unexpected is all we have in our holy scriptures. The unexpected sense of a young man whose name would be changed to Israel, the one who stole the birthright and yet is named and has the name for all of the people. Or the young man who was thrown and sold into slavery into Egypt and yet rises to be head of Pharaoh's household and his brothers come and he brings them all together there to survive the drought in their country. Or no one expects the baby floating in the reeds there to be the one, the one who doesn't really have quite a, has a little bit of a stutter to have that one, Moses, be the one that leads the people out of slavery and into the land of promise. No one expected David, the young shepherd. No one expected so-and-so to be the prophet. No one expected so-and-so to be there. No one expected. We are a faith of no one expected that. And every year we come back to the second Sunday of Advent and we hear the story of John the Baptist proclaiming the one is coming after me. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
every year we come back to this expectant moment, this advent, this adventure, this way of traveling with each other to Christmas morning to once again do something that no one expected. No one expected a pandemic. No one expected 2020. And yet, all of us, all of you out there, all of us here, we have done what we've always been expected to do, which is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus in word and deed. Because we are a people who expect the expected. We expect God to be merciful and loving and kind. And we don't always believe it. We believe often, even though we don't like to say it out loud, that church is basically a bunch of unicorns, or church is scary and is a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex, that church is a competition, the church is not a place of love and grace. Oftentimes when people encounter Christians, they expect someone to be a bigot. Oftentimes when they encounter Christians, they expect a Christian to be a judgmental. Oftentimes when people meet Christians, they expect them to not be, in the words of Gandhi, I like your Christ. I just don't like your Christians. And that's hard to hear. But perhaps Advent is a time for us to hear hard things and to remember. To remember ourselves during this pandemic and how we stayed together. To remember how our God is good. To remember all of the ways in all of the situations over the last couple of months where we have actually been what Christ called us to be people who feed, people who heal, people who look for good, people who sacrifice their self-righteousness for the gift of grace. Perhaps this is a season where we do and remember the expectation of ourselves, which is we represent Jesus in the world and what that means. No one expected, and yet, look, here we are, 2,000 years later, continuing to proclaim what's expected of us, that Jesus died for sinners, and if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So that's who we are. And so I expect this Christmas will come and go, and I expect 2021 to be much different than 2020. And I expect Jesus Christ to be the same today and forever. And to that I give thanksgiving and I give gratitude to a God who loves me that much. Amen.
refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this challenging and uncertain time of global pandemic and public health crisis, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church, and the world. For the church, that it may not grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ and serve as beacon of hope to a suffering world. We pray for Michael, the presiding bishop, Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishops, and all who minister in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all affected by coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good as the outbreak spreads. May barriers that divide be brought down, that bonds of trust may be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant public health and government officials in our nation the strength and will to act swiftly and decisively with wisdom and compassion in service to all. We pray especially for Donald, President of the United States, the Congress, governors, and elected officials in local municipalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they have access to medical care and regain their strength and health. Grant them your healing grace. Give strength to all who are caring for loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For healthcare workers who, with hearts of service, stand on the front lines of providing care, grant them courage and protection as they put the needs of public safety before their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless scientists and researchers around the world as they combat the virus, that their work may yield knowledge to develop a vaccine, treatments, and improved measures to reduce its spread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the safety and well-being of all who travel and those who remain quarantined, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts, that, confident in your providence, we may be generous in sharing our resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that our churches and communities of faith may reflect your love as they minister to the most vulnerable among us. Fill them with your Holy Spirit as they work to be your healing hands and feet to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have already lost loved ones to the virus and those who will yet suffer such loss, that they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with the saints... They may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low. That we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. 
Is this strength and consolation above all the earth award? Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born by people to deliver, born of child and yet King, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom reign. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to We're so glad you chose to worship with us today here at St. Mark's. If you'd like to learn anything more about our formation opportunities, our service opportunities, or other ways that you can get involved, you can uh, check us out on the web at www.stmarks-houston.org.